Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today with a Fallout 76 news update. The patch notes have dropped for update 1.4 on the PS4 and Xbox One and update 1.6 on the PC for this title. So the last beta sessions for this game will feature this 30 gigabyte update that you have to download. And we have general performance improvements, some gameplay tweaks. We're going through all of it today. The patch notes will be linked in the description down below. Let's get started with some general improvements for stability and performance. The Fallout 76 game client and servers have received significant stability improvements, emphasis on significant and performance. Several issues have been addressed to resolve hitches during gameplay and other performance issues. That's the one I'm most excited about because it's a big problem with Fallout 76 that it still drops pretty heavily if you get into some chaotic areas. So I'm looking forward to testing that out in some of the latest sessions. Hopefully no other bugs arise through these patches. That's something that we often see in gaming is that some issues get addressed while new ones are created. Now there's some balance changes. Many mid and high level enemies have received additional balance adjustments. Some notable changes include Scorched. Health and damage resistance have been increased for mid and high level Scorched. Health and damage resistance has been slightly decreased for mid and high level supermutants, and melee damage overall has been increased across many mid and high level enemies, particularly Mirelurks and Mirelurk Hunters. So I like as a strength build personally, the increase of melee damage. I still have yet to have an issue with it. I still think it's incredibly powerful. I'm really happy that they increase some of the health and damage resistance for the Scorch. They seemed like enemies you could just blow through no matter what level they are. So to increase some of the mid to high level Scorch to make them a bit of a tougher challenge, I do like that personally because they seem to be the easiest, most common enemies you encounter in the game. So a little more challenge on that end is good news in my opinion. Camps, workshops, and crafting have received a change as well for crafting material requirements to craft throwing knives and tomahawks has been increased additionally throwing knives and tomahawks can no longer be sold to vendors i didn't even know that was a thing but that's crazy because throwing knives were so easy to make and then you could just turn around to a vendor and sell them holy crap so i get exactly why bethesda did that that's a good balance change it keeps people from getting rich too quickly so good change on them there's also been a tweak to events the time required to restart a previously completed event quest has been increased from 45 minutes to the odd time of an hour and 12 minutes. Very strangely specific, but I do like this because there have been times, I think of Flatwoods every time, where anytime I go to and fro with that place, I find myself restarting the same event. So an increase in the time gap there, I do personally appreciate that because it gets a little redundant. I'd like it if it was almost player specific, like they can only encounter a certain event every so often, but maybe this is part of the farming process as this game develops and we start finding out what's the best loot and what's the ideal end game loot. Maybe repeating these event quests is a thing that we're gonna actually want. But right now, those are just my thoughts on that. We also have various bug fixes. Let's start off with the art and graphics. Enemies fixed an issue that could cause enemies to stop playing animations and instead enter a default T pose. That sounds great to me. Graphics fixed an issue that could cause artifacting to display on the character's hands and weapons while inside White Springs and playing in first person. Graphics for the Xbox fixed an issue causing the game world to appear darker than intended on Xbox. I did talk about that, I believe in yesterday's video on how some people were saying, but I thought it was for the PS4 Pro that the game was appearing darker. Water, water no longer flickers or flashes white in building interiors, good to know. Workbenches on the PS4, item previews no longer exhibit visual issues while attempting to modify weapons at workbenches huge 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 i encountered that so many times it was the weirdest graphical bug i've ever seen but good to know that's gone workshops powered objects placed at workshops will now correctly display animations and sound effects good good stuff all good changes right there not that any fixes are really bad but more so just i'm happy to see some issues that i've noticed many times and people talking about have been addressed audio Voice chat, changing Xbox Live communications and multiplayer settings to friends now correctly limits in-game voice chat to Xbox Live friends, and also selecting play with team from the main menu no longer causes voice chat to stop functioning for non-leader teammates. Camp workshops and crafting, successfully defending a workshop no longer awards more aid items than intended. That's not great because when I was attacked by a bunch of anglers, I was pretty much out of healing items. So, oh boy, that's a little terrifying. I am become death. Launching a nuke will now complete the I Am Become Death quest for all teammates. So that means that if 
your whole team collects all of the nuclear silo keys that will all succeed in that mission. Good to know. And the rewards for First Contact and Thirst Things First, which are some of the beginning quests for the main story, no longer award more aid items than intended. Good to know. Improvements have been made to better support text display across several languages, including Japanese, Russian, simplified Chinese, and traditional Chinese. Blueprints now accept names that utilize Japanese, Russian, simplified Chinese, and traditional Chinese characters. Running Fallout 76 with language options set to traditional or simplified Chinese no longer causes the game to launch in English. That's pretty big for those who are trying to play in Chinese. Logins on PC. Fixed an issue that could prevent players from logging into Fallout 76 on PC. Yeah, that's good to know that's gone. Resolution on PC. Adjusting Windows display scaling settings no longer causes the game to launch in a lower or higher resolution than expected. Once again, that's something that you'd expect to be there at launch. The map markers no longer disappear when attempting to respawn after dying while over encumbered and possessing no caps. Settings on the PC. The lighting quality can now correctly be changed to high something you'd expect to be working. Social, players will no longer encounter a failed to reconnect to team error message at the main menu. Awesome. Fixed an issue that could prevent a player from seeing one another in the social menu after adding each other as friends. And lastly is trading. Attempting to trade with a player who is entering power armor no longer causes the game client to become unresponsive. These are things, man, that like I see and think to myself, how did someone figure this out? How did that timing just happen? And how did Bethesda narrow that down to an issue? But that's good that feedback's getting their way. So two things I noticed that haven't been addressed yet. Number one, stash. That's been a big issue for Fallout 76. People are having completely full stashes and completely full inventories and they're having trouble looting and it's really getting in the way of the gameplay and they're forcing themselves to use materials that they would otherwise like to save for something else. Now, Pete Hines actually had a response to this on Twitter. He said, there is a stash limit. I wasn't aware of one before. There are reasons why it's there and those reasons are important. The team is looking into what it might be able to do. If it happens, it will not be available in this patch. And obviously, as we can see in these patch notes, it's not there, but it's something I'm imagining the team's talking about. I feel the reason the stash limit is in there because if you are a strength build, which I am, I'm sitting around already 200 carry weights and it definitely makes life a lot easier. But once that stash limit fills up, then the only thing you've got is pretty much your inventory or you force yourself to build a ton, which is fine. But when I want to set down a camp, I want to make sure that I'm spending a ton of my resources and not only like half of them and having a half finished base. The other issue that I hope to see changed is some of the tweaks to the map markers. This is something that really, really needs fixing. Just identifying what quest I'm looking at when I'm viewing my surroundings and lining up with certain markers on the compass on the screen. Just tell me what quest I'm looking at so it's easier to follow instead of popping up the map finding that marker, orienting myself, popping it up again. I've talked about this multiple times, so I apologize for repeating myself, but it's just something that I really want to have fixed. If you need a comparison, check out ESL. They have it really well done. Same exact system, works just fine. Anyway, those are the patch notes for update 1.4 slash 1.6 for Fallout 76. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Be sure to continue sending Bethesda feedback on the beta, letting them know what they can change because I think we're going to have at least one more big patch come launch day, but this is probably the last patch we're going to have to play with for the beta. So that'll be it for me, and I'll catch you guys next time. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook. Those links are in the description down below, along with my Patreon. Do consider supporting that as it fuels all the content I create here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.